Dear fellow activists and friends, I thank the League of Filipino Students of St. Louis University for inviting me to speak on the second propaganda movement in this educational discussion and for holding this to celebrate the 55th anniversary of my speech, The Tasks of the Second Propaganda Movement, which I had the honor to deliver at the St. Louis University on October 12, 1966. On this occasion, I express warmest greetings of solidarity to all of you who are participating in the online discussion. By way of joining this event, let me underscore the historical significance of the call for carrying out the second propaganda movement, the most important consequences and the continuing relevance of said movement to the current struggle for national freedom and democracy. The first propaganda movement led by Dr. Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. del Pilar, and Graciano Lopez Jaina was the reformist prelude and somehow contributed to the emergence of the Katipunan and the eventual victory of the old democratic revolution. This was led by the liberal bourgeoisie. It overthrew Spanish colonialism and established the national independence of the Filipino people for the first time. U.S. imperialism waged a war of aggression and imposed a new colonial regime on the Philippines. The great anti-imperialist senator, Claro Mayorecto, called for the second propaganda movement. It became the duty and task of Kabatang Makabayan to wage the second propaganda movement and generate the conditions for the rise of the new democratic revolution led by the proletariat in consonance with the world era of modern imperialism and the world proletarian revolution. In waging the second propaganda movement, the KM discreetly promoted the study of the revolutionary theory of the proletariat and its application on the concrete conditions of the Philippines, and militantly propagated the general political line of the National Democratic Movement. As originally intended, the Second Propaganda Movement developed into a cultural revolution, upholding a national, scientific, and mass-oriented culture within the framework of anti-imperialist and anti-feudal struggle of the people for national and social liberation. In carrying out the Second Propaganda Movement, the KM became a nationwide comprehensive youth organization deeply rooted among the masses of students and young professionals, young workers and young peasants. It served as a training school of the proletariat and it provided cadres and members with ideological, political and organizational preparation to the Communist Party of the Philippines on a national scale. The KM has a major share in the development of the People's Democratic Revolution in the Philippines. In the last more than 52 years, KM members in their thousands joined the People's War when Marcos suspended the writ of habeas corpus in 1971 and imposed fascist dictatorship on the Filipino people and outlawed the KM in 1972 and the local organs of political power. The chronic crisis of semi-colonial and semi-feudal system continues to worsen. The conditions of underdevelopment, high unemployment and mass poverty have become more grave than ever before. The escalating conditions of exploitation and state terrorism are driving more and more people to join the armed revolution. They are outraged by the traitorous, tyrannical, mass-murdering and plundering Duterte regime and by its scheme to rig the 2022 presidential elections through its control of the reactionary armed forces, the Comelec and the vote count. The reappearance of the Marcos fascist dictatorship in the form of state terrorism of the Duterte regime exposes in the most stark way the decadent and moribund character 
of the ruling system. In so many ways, Duterte has surpassed Marcos, especially in the mass murder of male suspects in the bogus war on drugs and in the armed counter-revolution, and in bankrupting the reactionary government and the economy in so short a time. He has taken advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic to railroad the Anti-Terror Act, which is actually his license for state terrorism in the name of anti-terrorism, to further militarize civilian agencies and functions of the reactionary government and to steal billions of public money intended for mass testing, medical equipment, medicines, and economic assistance to the people who have lost their jobs and other means of livelihood. The second propaganda movement has continuing validity and relevance for exposing and condemning the three evil forces of foreign monopoly capitalism, domestic feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism that afflict the Filipino people for propagating the legal national democratic movement and for participating in the people's democratic revolution. The crisis of the world capitalist system continues to worsen and generates conditions favorable to the Philippine Revolution. The anti-imperialist and democratic mass struggles are surging forward on a global scale. They are the prelude to the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution. While the world is in great turmoil and great disorder, we are looking at the rise of the proletariat and people of the world in mass struggles for national liberation, democracy, and socialism. Thank you.